what a state I am in. Before he came, nothing mattered. But now that he has come to live with us, my heart is filled with his dear self. My home will be no home when he leaves. <sighs> Doctor, Doctor, do you think he... If there is life in his fate, then he will live long. But what the medical scriptures say, it seems... Great heavens, what? The scriptures have it, boil or palsy, cold or drought, spring, all alike. Oh, get along. Don't fling your scriptures at me. You only make me more anxious. Tell me, tell me what I can do. The patient needs most scrupulous care. That's true. But tell me how. I have already mentioned on no account he must be let out of doors. Poor child. It is very hard to keep him indoors all day long. What else you can do? The atom sun and the drum are both very bad for the little fellow. For the scriptures have it in wheezing, sooning, or in nervous fret, in jaundice or leaden eyes. Never mind the scriptures, please. Hey, then we must shut the poor thing up. Is there, is there no other method? None at all. For in the wind and in the sun, why don't you let the scriptures alone and come straight to the point? What's to be done then? Your system is very, very hard for the poor boy. It tears my heart to see him wince as he takes your medicine. The more he winces, the surer is the effect. In medicine, as in good advice, least palatable is the truest. Ah, well, I must be trotting now. Well, I am jiggered. There's Gaffer now. Why? Why? I won't bite you. No, but you are a devil to send children off their heads. <laughs> but you aren't a child and you have no child in the house. Why you worry then? But I have brought a child into the house now. Indeed? How so? You remember how my wife was trying to adopt a child? Yes, I know. But you didn't like the idea. It was about the money, you know. That somebody else's child would cost me money. I hated that idea. But this boy clings to my heart in such a queer sort of way. And now your money goes all for him and you just feel happy about it. <laughs> when I know it's for him, working and earning money becomes a joy to me. Ah, oh, well, and why did you pick him up? He's a distant relative of my wife. He has had no mother since infancy. Oh. And later he lost his father as well. Poor thing. And so he needs me all the more. The doctor says there's something wrong with the organs in his little body. And there isn't much hope. The only chance is to keep him indoors, away from the wind and sun. But you are such a terror. You attract the children to your silly games outdoors. God bless my soul. And so I am as bad as the wind and the sun. <laughs> but I know something too of the game of keeping them indoors. <laughs> when I am ready with my work, I am coming over to see this little boy of yours. Uncle? Uncle? Is that you, Amol? May I go out in the courtyard? No, my dear. No. 
Look, there's the squirrel sitting with his tail up and with his tiny hands picking up grains and crunching them. Can't I run up there? No, my darling. No. Uncle, why won't you let me go out? Fish, I were a squirrel. It would be lovely. Doctor says it's bad for you to be out. How, how can the doctor know? Of course the doctor knows. He who has studied and read so many books. Does his book learning tell him everything? Of course. Don't you know? Oh, I'm so stupid. I don't read books. But I want to go out, go out and see everything there is. Listen to that. See, what is there so much to see? See that far away mountain from our window? I want to go out and see what's on the other side. You silly. Now listen. Since that mountain stands there as a barrier, it means you can't get beyond it. What else would be the use of that mountain, eh? But now, I have to go to work. Promise me not to go out and don't talk to any strangers. But I love to talk to strangers. What if they kidnap you? That would be splendid. But no one ever takes me away. They all want me to stay in here. I am off to my work. But darling, you won't go out, will you? No, I won't. But uncle, let me sit here by the window so I can look out. Cards, cards, fine cards. Cards, cards, fine cards. Hello, card seller. Hello. Why do you call me? Will you buy some cards? No, I have no money. What a boy. Why call out then? Wasting my time. I would go with you if I could. With me? Yes, I wanted to go with you when I heard you call from far down the road. But then what are you doing here, my child? The doctor says I can't be out, so I sit here all day long. Poor thing. Whatever has happened to you? I can't tell. You see, I'm not learned. I can't read. So I don't know what's the matter with me. Where do you come from? Uh, from from our village. Your village? Is it very far? Our village lies on the river Shamli, at the foot of the Panchmura Hills. Panchmura Hills? Shamli River? I feel I've been there. Your village is under some big old trees, just by the side of the road. Isn't that so? That's right. Yes. And on the slope of the hill, cattle grazing. Indeed, they are. And the women fill the pitchers with the water from the river and carry them on their heads. Really? Surely you must have been there sometime. I haven't. But when the doctor lets me go out, you're going to take me to your village. I will, my child. With pleasure. And... You will teach me to cry curds and shoulder the yoke like you and walk the long, long road? <laughs> oh, my dear. Why should you sell cards? 
no, no. He will study and become a doctor or maybe a lawyer. No, I don't want to study. I'll be like you and take my curds from the village under the big trees. And I will hawk it from cottage to cottage. Oh, how do you cry? Curds, curds, fine curds. Teach me the tune, will you? Curds, curds, fine curds. Curds, curds, fine curds. Dear child, do you want some curd? But I have no money. No, 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 no. Don't talk of money. You make me happy if you take some. Say, have I kept you too long wasting your time? Not a bit. No loss to me at all. You have taught me how to be happy selling cards. Cards, cards, fine cards. From the Pachmura Mountains, by the banks of Shamli River. But, but look, there's the watchman on his round. Watchman, watchman, come and have a word with me. What's all this row about, huh? Aren't you afraid of the likes of me? No. Why should I be? Suppose I march you off, then? Where will you take me to? Far away beyond the mountain? Suppose I march you straight to the king, hmm? To the king, do, will you? But the doctor, he won't let me go out. No one can ever take me away. I've got to stay here all day long. Doctor won't let you go out. Ha ha ha. I see. You are sick. Won't you sound the gong, watchman? Time has not yet come. How curious. Some say time has not yet come and some say Time has gone by, but surely your time will come the moment you strike the gong. <laughs> That's not possible. I strike up the gong only when it is time. Yes, I love to hear your gong. Tell me, why does your gong sound? My gong sounds to tell people. Time waits for none, but goes on forever. Where? Where does it go? To what land? That no one knows. Then I suppose that no one has ever been there. Oh, I do wish to fly with time to that land of which no one knows anything. All of us has to get there one day, my child. Me too? Yes, you too. But the doctor won't let me out. One day the doctor himself may take you there by the hand. He won't. You don't know him. He only keeps me in. One greater than he comes and lets us free. When will this great doctor come for me? I can't stick in here anymore. But when your gong goes off, dong, dong, dong. It goes to my heart. Say, watchman. Yes, my child. Say, what is going on there in that big house on the other side where there is a flag flying high up and people always go in and out? Oh, there. That's our new post office. Post office? Whose? Whose? Why, the king, surely. Do letters come from the king to his post office here? Of course. One fine day, there may be a letter for you in there. A letter for me? But I'm only a little boy. <laughs> the king sends tiny notes to little boys. When shall I have my letter? How do you know he will write to me? Why else should he set his office right in front of your window? But who will fetch me my king's letter when it comes? The king has many postmen. Don't you see them run about with the guild badges around their chests? Where do they go? From door to door, 
all through the country. I'll be the king's postman when I grow up. <laughs> postman indeed. Rain or shine, delivering letters. That's very hard work. But that's what I would like best. But oh, your work is great too. When it's silent in the heat of the noon, your gong sounds. Dong, dong, dong. And sometimes when I wake up at night, I can hear your gong slowly sounding. Dong, dong, dong. Uh, I must be off. There's the village headman. If he catches me gossiping here, there'll be a great to do. See that umbrella hopping along? That's him. Everybody is afraid of him. He's making trouble for everybody. All right, I must be off now. I will drop in tomorrow morning and, and tell you the news of the town. It would be splendid to have a letter from the king every day. I'd read them here by the window. But, oh, I can't read. Who will read them out to me? And, and if the postman can't find me? The headman. Mr. Headman, may I have a word with you? Who is yelling after me in the street? Is it you? You wretched monkey? You are the headman. Everybody minds you. Oh, yes. They do. They must. Do the king's postman listen to you? Oh, yes. They have got to. Will you tell the postman? It's Amol who sits by the window here. What for? In case there's a letter for me. A letter for you? Whoever is going to write to you? If the king does. Ha, ha, ha. Crazy little fellow. A king indeed. And you are bosom friend. <laughs> Why do you sound like that? Are you cross with me? Of course. Snipper snappers like you getting letters from the king. <laughs> the silliest thing I have heard. <laughs> Are you walking there? How your ankles tinkle. Please, oh please, stop. I haven't a moment to spare. It is already late. I don't care to stay here either. But the doctor won't let me out. Oh, who are you? I'm Shudha. What Shudha? Don't you know? Daughter of the flower seller here. I hear the flowers in my basket. Oh, flower gathering. That's why your feet seem so glad and your ankles jingle so merrily as you walk. If I could go out, I would pick some flowers for you from the very topmost branches of the trees. I have to pick flowers and weave garlands every day. Wish I could take it easy like you. What would you do then all day long? I could play with my doll and with the pussy cat and... Oh, but it's getting late and I can't stay here or I won't find a single flower. Please, stay a little longer, please. On my way back home with the flowers, I'll come, I'll come and talk to you. And you'll let me have a flower then? No, how can I? It has to be paid for. I'll pay when I grow up, before I live to look for work on the other side of the river. Very well then. And you'll come back when you have your flowers? I will. You will? Really? Yes, I will. You won't forget me? I'm Omol, remember that? I won't forget you. You'll see. Hello? Hello? Where are you all off to? We are off to play. What will you play at? We'll play at being plowmen. This is our plowshare. We too are the pair of oxen. Come out and play with us. 
doctor won't let me out. Do you mind what the doctor says? Let's be off. Don't go. You could play here so I can watch you. What can we play at here? With all these toys of mine? Here you go. Have them. What fine toys. Look, a ship. And you will let us have them. You take them. I don't want them. Can't I sit by the window today, Uncle? Would the doctor mind? Yes, darling. You have made yourself worse, sitting there day after day. Oh, no. I always feel well when I'm there. No, you don't. You tire yourself talking to everybody, young or old. It's not good for you. But, Uncle, my Fukir might pass if he doesn't see me by the window. You are Fakir? Whoever is that? He comes and talks to me of the many lands where he has been. I love to hear him. How's that? I don't know of any Fakirs here. This is, this is about the time he comes. Please, please, please let him come in and talk to me. There you are. Here comes the Fokir. Come on in. But this is... Shh! <clears throat> I'm the Fokir. He's no Fokir. I recognize him. Where have you been this time, Fokir? To the Isle of Parrots. I am just back. Isle of Parrots? Oh, yes. I'm not like you. A journey doesn't cost a thing. I go just where I like. How jolly. Remember your promise to take me with you when I'm well? Of course. And I'll teach you so many traveler secrets that nothing in sea or forest or mountain can bar your way. What's all this nonsense? But if the doctor joins in with this uncle of yours, <laughs> then my magic will be useless, my dear Amal. No, uncle will not tell the doctor and I promise to lie quiet. But the day I'm well, off I go with the Fokir and nothing in sea or forest or mountain can stop me. Dear child, don't talk of going away. It makes me so sad when I hear you talk like that. This is, this is more than I can stand. Tell me, Fokir, what's the parrot's eye like? It's a land of wonders. A haunt of birds. No men are there. They neither speak nor walk. They simply sing and fly. How glorious. And it's by some sea? Of course. It's on the sea. And blue hills are there? Indeed. They live among the blue hills. At sunset, when there is a red glow on the hillside, all the birds with their green wings go flocking to their nests. And there are waterfalls? Dear me, of course. You don't have a hill without its waterfall. Like molten diamonds. And what dances they have. They make the pebbles sing as they rush over them to the sea. No devil of a doctor can stop them for a moment. But the birds looked upon me as nothing but a man. Merely a trifling creature without wings. And they would have nothing to do with me. Otherwise, I'd build a cave-in for me on the island. I wish I were a bird. 
<laughs> but I hear you have fixed up with the dairyman to sell cards when you grow up. <laughs> I'm afraid such business won't flourish on the birds. <laughs> Fucky, now that's uncle's off, just tell me, has the king sent me a letter to the post office? I gather that his letter is on its way here. On the way? Where is it? Is it on that road winding through the trees to the end of the forest? That's where it is. You know all about it already. Yes, I do. You make me see all the same. Do you know the king who has this post office? I do. He's the one who gives me everything I need. Should I ask him for what I need too? You won't need to ask. He will give it to you of his own accord. I shall say, make me your postman. Don't let me stay at home all day. What is there to be sad for, even if you were to stay at home? I'm not sad. At first, when they shut me in here, I felt the day so long. But then, as they put the king's post office here, I like more and more being indoors. And as I think I'll get a letter one day, I feel quite happy. I wonder if I shall make out what will be in the king's letter. Wouldn't it be enough if it just bore your name? Have you got any idea of the trouble you have got me into? What's the matter? I hear you have let it get rumored that the king has planted his office here to send messages to both of you. Well, what about it? Our headman, our headman has had it told to the king anonymously. Aren't you aware that everything reaches the king's ears? Then why don't you look out? He will bring me to ruin if you do like that. Say, Fakir, will the king get cross? Cross? Nonsense. And with a child like you and a Fakir such as I am? Let's see if the king gets angry and then won't I give him a piece of my mind. Fakir, I've been feeling a sort of darkness coming over my eyes. Everything seems like a dream. I long to be quiet. Won't the king's letter come? Suppose this room melts away all of a sudden. Suppose... The letter is sure to come today, my boy. And how do you feel today? I feel awfully well today, doctor. Don't quite like it. Bad sign that he's feeling well. Medical experts all agree. For godless sake, doctor, leave the medical experts alone. What's happening? I am afraid we are losing him. I warned you before. This looks like a phrase exposure. No. No, I never let him out of doors. And the windows have been shut all the time. Draft is coming in through the front door. Better lock it at once. And draw the curtains as well. The rays of sunset will only keep the patient awake. Komal has shut his eyes. What now? There's your head man selling in. What a bother. I must be going. Doors and windows must be shut. Hello, Archish. Be quiet. No, Fakir. Did you think I was asleep? I wasn't. I could hear everything. Even voices far away. 
I say, Madhav, I hear you hooked up with big wigs nowadays. Huh? Oh, please. We are but common people. But your child here is expecting a letter from the king. Don't you take any notice of him? A mere foolish boy. I bet the king couldn't find a better family like you. And why has the king put his post office right before your window? Of course, because there is a letter for you from the king, Archin. Indeed, really? How can it be false? You are the king's chum. Here is your letter. <laughs> this is the letter. <laughs> please, please don't mock me. Say, say, Fakir, is it so? Yes, my dear. I as Fakir tell you, it is his letter. How is it? I can't see. It looks all blank to me. What is there in the letter, Mr. Headman? The king says, uh, I am uh, calling on you shortly. You had better have puffed rice for me. Palace food is uh, quite tasteless to me now. <laughs> Please, headman, don't you joke about these things. Joking indeed? He would not dare. Are you out of your mind too, Kaffar? Out of my mind? Well, I am. I can read clearly that the king writes. He will come with his royal physician. Fakir, Fakir, do you hear his trumpet? <laughs> I fear he won't until he's a bit more off his head. <laughs> Mr. Headman, I thought you were cross at me and didn't like me. I never could have believed that you would fetch me the king's letter. Let me wipe the dust off your feet. Hmm. This child does have an instinct of reverence. The little silly, he had a good heart. Listen, the gong. Dong, dong, dong. Is the evening star up? How is it I can't see? Oh, the curtains are drawn. I'll open them. What's that? Who is it? What a noise! Open the door! Headman, Headman, I hope they are not robbers. Who is there? It is the Headman talking. I forbid you to enter here making such noise. See, the noise has stopped. That's what happened when they hear the Headman's voice. No wonder the noise has ceased. They have smashed the outer door. Our sovereign king comes tonight. Oh my God. At what hour of the night? On the second watch. When my friend the watchman strikes his gong, Ding, dong, ding, dong, ding. Then? Yes, then. The king sends his greatest physician to attend to his young friend. What's this? How closed it is here. Open wide all the doors and windows. How do you feel, my child? I feel very well, doctor, very well. How fresh and open. I can see all the stars from the other side of the dark. Will you feel well enough to leave your bed when the king comes in the middle of the night? Oh yes, I am dying to be about for ever so long. Arrange flowers through the room for the king's visit. We can't have that person in here. No, let him be, doctor. He's a friend. It was he who brought me the king's letter. Very well. He may remain if he's a friend of yours. My child, the king likes you. Beg for a gift from him. 
Don't you worry, Uncle. I know exactly what I'll ask from him. What will you ask from him? I will ask him to make me one of his postmen, so I may wander far and wide delivering his message from door to door. Is that all? What will be our offerings to the king when he comes? He has commanded after rice. Say, headman, you were right. You said so. I, if you send message to my house, I could manage the king's advent really nice. No need at all. Now be quiet, all of you. Sleep is coming over him. I'll sit by his pillow. He's dropping asleep. Blow out the oil lamp. Only let the starlight stream in. Hush, he sleeps. What are you standing there for like a statue folding your palms? It makes me nervous. Why are they darkening the room? Silence. Unbeliever, silence. Amol? 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 He is asleep. I have some flowers for him. May I give them to him? Yes, you may. When will he be awake? Directly. When the king comes and calls him. Will you whisper a word for me in his ear? What shall I say? Tell him, Shudha has not forgotten him. Sukho dai, je dine udai, habe go jononi, jani somo. Mosu kudai, je dine udai, habe go jano ni, jani somo dai. Mosu kudai.